lost in a cryptocurrency maze. Which is pretty fitting because cryptocurrencies, like their most famous incarnation Bitcoin, are based on extremely complicated puzzles. These puzzles are programmed into the source code for Bitcoin. Roughly every 10 minutes or so, a new puzzle is released and computers all over the world race to solve it. Because the value of Bitcoin has gone up so markedly over the last year or so, well, this activity has become more and more popular. It can be fabulously lucrative. It's called Bitcoin mining. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin don't have a central register. Their strength comes from having what is called a distributed ledger. It's a blockchain. The blocks on the blockchain contain details of every transaction in the currency's history. As new transactions happen, they have to be placed in blocks and added to the chain. A new block contains roughly 2,500 new transactions. And to validate the new block, each one contains the answer to the puzzle from the last block. Ah, success. This is the work that the Bitcoin miners are doing. And if they, like me, succeed and solve the puzzle first, well, their reward is 12 and a half freshly released Bitcoin. And then, well, the whole process starts again with a new puzzle. The more computers and more computing power that's actually mining Bitcoin, the more the secure the network is, from some type of cyber attack or attempted theft. The Bitcoin miners are also processing the transactions. So if I were to send a Bitcoin to you, uh, a miner uh, would actually uh, verify that that transaction was legitimate before it is added to the blockchain, which is simply a ledger of all the Bitcoin transactions uh, in existence. Working in a coal mine, going down, down, down. Working in a coal mine. So what does Bitcoin mining actually look like? Well, it's taking place through those doors. I'm in a facility somewhere near London, that's all I can tell you. We're not allowed to give its precise location. And you may be able to detect already something about Bitcoin mining. It's incredibly noisy and it's about to get a whole lot noisier when we go in there. So we need these. you notice in here is it's not only extremely noisy, it's extremely hot as well. Today's miners aren't the grimy-faced men of granite of the past. Today, they have silk pocket squares. It's around 100 decibels. It's uh, basically like a jet getting off the ground. Can you open it up and we can have a look Absolutely. inside? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I'll do it for you. Don't, show the, don't show the combination. <laughs> so these are Bitcoin miners. Vlad Polachowski runs 63 mining computers. It is like a hedge, right? This is, he says, a spectacularly profitable enterprise. But... Of course, there is no guarantee in anything. Even if you buy like dollars or euro, there's no guarantee because the price keeps changing its volatility. Uh, you can guarantee your result in bitcoins. So basically, you already know the network difficulty. You can keep track of it. You know the performance of your miners and you know your running costs. So it's quite easy to calculate your net profit in bitcoins. What you don't know is the bitcoin exchange rate at any given time. So you, of course, depend on bitcoins volatility. And what is the profit? margin in an industry like Bitcoin mining now? Well, the profit margin, it doesn't really matter where you are. You can be in the UK, you can be in China, in Iceland and other countries. But roughly, usually, uh, your running costs are about 25% of your revenue, which makes your net profit around 75%, which is a very high margin. And that's why lots of people are in it now, is yes, it? Yes, I think so. There is huge concern about how much energy is now being spent Bitcoin mining, all those computers churning away all over the world. Estimates vary about how much power they're using. Some say it's as much as Monaco uses annually. Others say it's the same as Ireland's annual consumption. 
I think what gets missed often in this conversation is uh, that you know the costs of other aspects of our financial system, the mining of the metals that go into our coins, the operations of uh, you know payment centers and bank branches and ATMs, you know paper and currency shipping all this around, is also consuming a lot of electricity. It has a pretty big carbon footprint as well. And when you kind of compare Bitcoin's carbon footprint to our, our current financial system's carbon footprint, it doesn't look quite as bad. The amount of energy used by Bitcoin is going up and up, partly because people are using more and more powerful computers for mining. The Bitcoin algorithm actually adjusts the difficulty of the problem to make sure it only gets solved every 10 minutes. As the total computing power engaged in mining goes up, so does the difficulty. Nobody really expected it will become such a big thing. So in the beginning, you just had people mining bitcoins with their laptops and uh, computers. So it was relatively easy to get one. Mostly people are using ant miners that come from China. They are kind of very optimized, very powerful graphic cards. Uh, but they only can do one task. They can only mine bitcoins. So you can't use them for any other currencies apart from uh, Bitcoin Cash. So which direction is this currency going now? The only thing that we can say for sure is that the Bitcoin mines will fall silent one day. Bitcoin source code only allows the creation of 21 million Bitcoin, which, at the rate the puzzle is being solved every 10 minutes, will hit in 2140. What a Bitcoin will be worth next week is hard enough to predict, so who knows what the economics of this cryptocurrency will be by then.